done for me and no one can worship you for me here is my worship all of my worship father receive my worship all of my worship here is my worship all of my worship a father receive my worship all of my worship you lord you are worthy and no one can worship you for me for all the things you've done for me and no one can worship you for me lord here is my worship all of my worship father receive my worship all of my worship here is my worship all of my worship a father receive my worship all of my worship oh and i will not be silent i will always worship you as long as i am breathing i will always worship you oh and i will not be silent i will always worship you oh as long as i am breathing i will always worship you Stand on your feet. 
Here is my worship, all of my worship. Father, receive my worship, all of my worship. Here is my worship, all of my worship. Let's truly worship the Lord. Receive my worship, all of my worship. Here's our worship, Lord. Here's our worship, Lord. Here's our worship, Lord. Here's our worship, Lord. Here's our worship. Here's our worship, Lord. Here's our worship. We worship you, Father, our Father, our Father, our Father, our Father, our Father, our Father. And I will not be silent. I will always worship you. And this as long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. And I will not be silent. I will always worship you. As long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. reverence you today Lord we are nothing without you Lord we can't do anything without you Lord you placed breath in our bodies you allowed us to be active you allowed us to move you allow us to exist without you Lord with nothing God we pray today that you give us daily bread from on high give us manna Lord bless us with the word that will enrich our hearts bless us God this is the day that you've made, God, and we will rejoice and be glad. Lord, we are excited to be in your house, seeking for you to give us a word, Lord, that would challenge our behaviors to change. Lord, allow our appetite to be conducive to what you're dispersing. Lord, don't allow us to be so full to where we can't receive you. Bless us, God. Bless us. 
In the name of Jesus, we praise you and thank you. Touch hearts right now. Allow them to be receptive to your word, Jesus. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, let us put our hands together and give God a hand praise. Hallelujah. Come on, we can do better than that. Clap your hands and give the Lord Jesus a hand praise. He's worthy to be praised, worthy to be adored. Worthy to be magnified, worthy to be lifted up, worthy to be exalted. His name is above every name. His position is above every position. He's a great God and he's worthy to be praised. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, I serve an awesome God. That's why I praise him the way I praise him. I said, I, I serve an awesome God. That's why I praise Him the way I praise Him. That's why I lift Him up the way I lift Him up. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, my worship is for real. Hallelujah. We certainly thank the Lord, amen, for blessing us to be here this afternoon. Amen. I believe the Lord's going to do something today. Amen. Anybody came expecting God to do something? Just a few of y'all. Let me ask again. Anybody came expecting God to do something? Amen. Look at somebody and say, God is up to something. Amen. I thank God for my pastor and father, Apostle C.A. Coward. Amen. Thank God for the presiding bishop, Bishop McLeod, District Bishop, Bishop Williams. Thank God to the District Elder of the New North District. Elder Nixon Philiston, amen. To each and every one of you, amen. Thank God for our first time guest, Naeem. I said that right? Naeem, all right, where he at? Okay, Naeem, we thank God for you if you can hear me, amen. And, and meet me, meet me, that's you. All right, what's your name? Meet me, what's your real name? Kimori? Kimori? Kamaria, all right, I like that better. God bless you, Kamaria. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. I've been dealing and I want to continue on uh, my message, dealing with a relationship with God. And amen. This morning, we're going to talk about being friends with God, friends of God. And when you become a friend of God, you know, that's more of an intimate relationship where you could call him friend and he could call you. Well, it's not what you say, really. Amen. It's what he's saying. He, it's good when he call you friend. Because a lot of times you can call somebody friend or you say, that's my friend, and they're not claiming you back. Uh, my God. And it's a bad thing when you're claiming God and he ain't claiming you. Jesus. Say, oh, yeah, that's my, that's my friend. And, oh, Lord, yeah, that's my friend. That's my friend. And there's no claiming back amen and you know when it comes down to i don't know if y'all know about federal taxes or anything like that you claim something that don't belong to you you'll be in trouble yes, sir. Uh, so that's why god don't be claiming folk that don't belong and you out there claiming yes. folk that don't belong you get in trouble and say that's not my child that that belongs to somebody else yes. but when you have you know god says something very important i want everybody if anybody just sit in the back i want y'all to come out i want to listen to this message if anybody outside tell them to come inside James chapter number two, James chapter number two, Abraham, he had a friend, and amen, his friend, come on, move your book, son, you can move it out, put it in your lap, yeah, so that's, little, that's my sit down, all right, God had a friend, and amen, and Abraham, James chapter number two, and look at somebody and say, I want to be God's friend. Uh, yeah, I say it like you mean. Look at somebody else and say, I want to be God's friend. You know, and the thing about having a friendship with God is God considers not just you, but he considers your family. 
And what happens is even when God wants to destroy your family because he got a relationship with you, he may say, hold on now. You can have a conversation with him because it's your friend. Give me James chapter number two and verse 23. I'll read. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God. And it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Uh huh. And he was called the friend of God. And he was called the what? Friend. The friend of God. Give me John chapter 15 and verse number 14. Look at somebody and say, I want God to claim me. God to claim me. Y'all don't sound like y'all mean. Listen, let me tell you something. If you don't want God to claim you, you'll end up with like them folks in uh, Matthew chapter 7. Give me Matthew 7 first. So we. So when I say, when we start talking and conversing with each other and start speaking, you'll be able to understand what I'm saying. Give me Matthew chapter 7, uh, uh, chapter 7 and 21. These are people that didn't have a relationship with God and they was claiming him. Read, uh-huh. Jesus answered and said unto them. Jesus answered and said unto them. I have done one work. Uh-huh. And ye all marvel. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. If a man on the Sabbath day receive circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are ye angry at me? Because that's, that's Matthew 7 and 21. All right. Well, that sounded a little funny. I said, hold on now. All right. Matthew 7 and 21. Uh-huh. Not everyone that saith unto me. Not everyone that saith unto me. Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord. Shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, he said, not everyone that's claiming me shall enter. See, we got a lot of people that are claiming God and God ain't claiming them. Because of the failure of being in a relationship with God. Read, uh-huh. Not everyone said unto me, Lord, Lord. See, this is why you got to be careful. All these folks saying, you know, Jesus is my friend. I love God. All this mouth talk. We learned last week that people can say a lot with their mouth and their hearts be what? Far. Be a distance. People have a distance of God from their heart, but their mouth lying. Read, uh huh. Not on everyone. That saith unto me. That saith unto me, Lord, Lord, Lord uh huh. Shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh huh. But he that doeth the will of my Father, uh -huh. which is in heaven. He said, but he that's doing the will, and the will has something to do with the relationship because you can't get a will unless you're in the will. Amen. My God. Read, uh-huh. Many will say to me in that day. Many will say to me in that day. Now watch this. People going to start saying, well, I've been claiming you, God. I've been preaching. I've been prophesying. I've been laying hands, casting out devils. And God still said, hey, hold on now. I don't know who you are. Watch this. Now read, uh-huh. Many will say to me in that day, uh -huh. Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in thy name? Did not prophesy in your name, God? And in thy name have cast out devils? Yes. And in thy name done many wonders. So if you because we didn't have no relationship. Right. And we got all these people talking about, yeah, I know God, I know God, and God ain't never touched me. He never get intimate with them. Amen. My God, somebody yell a shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Go back down to Matthew 7. See, the, the, uh, you know, let me tell you something. You know, the importance of the relationship is not just saying that you've came to church. See, coming to church, it enhances the relationship. Amen. But just coming ain't good enough. You got to go past coming. Yes. Sometimes we say, oh yeah, I got a relationship with God because I've been in church on Sunday. That, that, that don't give you a relationship with God. Amen. It ain't based upon what you've done on Sunday. It's about what you do when you leave on Sunday. Oh my God. Do you keep the same status of your relationship when you're at work? Do people at your job know you're in love with God? Mm. It's a sad thing when you go to, you know, the pastor come up to your job and say, Hey, daughter, how you doing? They say, oh, that's your pastor. We know you went to church. <laughs> that's rough when your own family members don't know that you're saved. Family don't know you say, the job don't know you say, the school don't know you say. Only person that know you say is you when you come to church on Sunday. <laughs> so your Sunday morning worship and praise is not enough. It's good, but it's not enough. Amen. That's why, you know what? The Bible, and let me show you this. Give, give me the book of Acts. We're going to come back to, uh, we're going to go back to uh, 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 Matthew. Give me Acts chapter number two. Now, God 
These folks, said they, they wanted God so much, they said, now listen, we're not just having Sunday morning worship and Wednesday night Bible study. Because they understood. Give me Acts chapter 2. And start at 42. Uh -huh. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Uh -huh. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common. Uh -huh. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. Uh -huh. And they continue in daily. And they continue in how often? Daily. Daily. Uh -huh. With one accord. Where? In the temple. So they had church every day. Hmm. And I, you know, some of y'all can't get here on the, on the Wednesday night Bible study or <laughs> Sunday morning or Sunday school. I, I could only imagine if we said we had church every day. My God. You know why they had church every day? Because they was really trying to get in an intimate relationship with God. Yes. They understood that if I could continue to come before his presence. And you know, your flesh will have you so messed up. That's why you need to be in church every day. Mm. Well, y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. That flesh will beating you up every single day. You only you got a Sunday and Wednesday. Mm -hmm. That's it. Sunday and Wednesday. Amen. They ain't got no Monday, Tuesday, no Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Just Sunday and Wednesday. And some of y'all don't have that relationship enough to pray to God and have your own worship service at the house. Mm -hmm. Why can't we worship at home? Let me ask y'all a question. How many do y'all have y'all phone be on your phone every day? All right, thank you for your honesty. Some of y'all don't look. You'll be on your phone every single day, but do you worship every day? Do you praise every day? Do you pray every day? Do you talk to God every day? There's no excuse because you can't say it's too boring because you, you, you get on that Facebook every single day and you ain't bored from Facebook. And Facebook got the same drama every day, just on a different page. Oh, my God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. TikTok, there's the same old, same old. All of the platforms that do the same and just a different person. Same drama, just a different person. But you say, I get bored with praying. I get bored with worshiping. I get bored at praising God. I get bored when it comes down to God. But when it comes down to all natural stuff, you keep doing that all day after a while. I know that thing get bored. You say, man, I don't even want to see this no more. But when I have a relationship with God, I can get to that status with God to where I want to be in his presence every single moment of my life. Because I don't want to just be a saint. I don't just want to be claimed as a church member. See, we just got, sometimes you just got members and ain't got saints. You got members, you don't have sons and daughters. You got members, but you don't have people of God. You just got people that are members of a church. We don't just want members in the church. We want people that got a relationship with God. This should, this should be the promotion. The promotion should be, I need to be in a relationship with God. We have to promulgate that information. I need to be in a relationship with God. Can't get to that place. Because all of the other things are in the way. Somebody shout hallelujah. And see, when it comes down to a friendship. Now, some of y'all ain't never really had no real friends. So you really don't know how to be a friend of God. Oh my God, I'm about to drop off and something now. So you never, some of y'all ain't never been good friends. So you know what a good friend is. See, one thing about a good friend is that a good friend will lay down his life. My God. See, I don't know about you, but when I have friends, I'm going to tell y'all this story real quick. Pastor Nixon, Elder Phyllis, and we was in, uh, what state we was in? North Carolina, and they was having a shootout. And we heard the shots. See, I'm from Philadelphia, and it, we, 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 you know, we was in a little urban neighborhood, and, and us is the hood, all right? And, and so, come here, son. We heard the gunshots, so I grabbed him and threw him down and got, on, got over him like that. That's what a real friend does. Because I said, man, I take a, you can sit down, son. So I take a bullet for my friend. Some of y'all don't, don't, don't have friendships like that. Woo-wee. Hello, y'all there with me? Some of y'all don't do that. Yeah, I, don't, I ain't doing that for my friend. I do that for my mama, but I ain't doing that for my friend. A real friend will lay down his life. Y'all, you know how when you was in a club and somebody messed with your friend. If you see, if you ain't, if you if you wasn't fighting when your friend was fighting, then you wasn't a friend. 
You know, sat there watch your friggin' beat up, and you sitting over there talking about, oh, I was trying to break it. No, 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 we don't need you to break it up. We wanted you to get in there because you're supposed to be my, y'all ain't saying nothing. If we roll that way, if I'm fighting, you fight. My God, somebody shout hallelujah. You know, if you're in the world and your, your friend, if your friend's fighting, everybody was fighting. And if you didn't fight, you was out of the group. Nobody was saying nothing. No, yeah, you ain't, you ain't see him. He was over in the corner. Everybody beating, everybody swinging, throwing bottles. He over in the corner. Because a good friendship, it deals with protection. A good friend won't allow, I'm about to get in some mess now, won't allow somebody to talk about them. Say, hold on now. You, hey, hey, hey. That's my friend you talking about. People don't have genuine relationships. That's why when people downplay God, people down say, you don't say nothing. Just let it ride. Now, brother, you ain't going to, hey, listen, I understand your belief, but you ain't going to talk about God in front of me. So you, you know, you might need to change the station or change the tune or something or head on over that way. I'm going to walk away, but I ain't going to let you talk about him like that. We don't have that relationship with God like that, see, because you, you usually let people talk about your friend and probably still do. Somebody say something about your friend and you sit there and listen to him and then repeat it. My God. My, it's quiet. Let me move on to the next <laughs> scripture. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing? Because y'all don't know how to be real friends. Real friends don't let nobody talk about no friend. Nobody said nothing about my friend. Hey, did you hear about? No, I ain't hear about it, and I don't want to hear about it. And that's my friend, and you might better watch your mouth. See, when I was in the world, man, you can't talk about my friend, man. Okay. Amen. About a swing or something. Hey, hold on, you better watch your mouth or my fist be in it. See, y'all don't, that, that's how we used to be back in the day now. When you was in the, in the, in the hood or something, you, we, 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 we ain't talk about friends. We didn't, we didn't do that. You weren't about to bother with my friend. I'm going I'm to I'm take up for my friend. Right. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Yeah, somebody say, I'm taking up, taking up for God. See, when you, when you take up for your friend and, and, she, and, and, I, and maybe I have to teach you all how to be real friends. Real friends, not just Friends, but a real friend, a true friend. What does a true friend do? True friend has my back. I vouch for my friend. My God. See, some of y'all don't talk about God. You ain't got no friendship with him. You don't vouch. You don't talk about how he healed you. You don't talk about how he made you whole. You don't talk about, y'all ain't saying nothing. You don't talk about how he delivered you from what you used to be in. Because you ain't vouching for your friend. But you get the latest topic or the hottest gossip, you regurgitate that. The misleading information, the bad information, we disperse that out of our mouths. But when it comes down to the good things, I, I want to have a good friendship with God. Somebody shout hallelujah. All right, give me John 15 and 14. Ye are my friends. Ye are my what? Friends. Uh-huh. If ye do whatsoever I command you. If you do whatever I command you, you become my what? Friend. Friend. Now, let me show you something. Give me Proverbs 17 and 17. See, one thing about a friend is that a friend don't turn his back on a friend. Talking about real friends. So now how you be turning your back on God, y'all never want no friendship. Because if you can turn your back on somebody that has been there for you and loved you, and, and the problem is a lot of y'all got childish behaviors where you don't understand how friendships are supposed to be. Because it, even if you make me upset, I still love you because you're my friend. And let me tell you something, real friends tell you the truth. And God will show you how ugly you really are. And if, my God, and if you really love God, and that's really your friend, you say, God, that, that is me, and I'm going to do better about myself. I'm thanking you for showing me how ugly I really am because you are my friend. Your friend will tell you when you got stuff in your teeth. Yes. Friend will tell you if you ain't matching. Your friend will tell you, girl, that, 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 ain't, that, that ain't the right outfit there. That ain't the right one. <laughs> Your friend will tell you, no, baby, that ain't the right hairstyle there. Yeah, they done, yeah ah, no, not that one. Your friend will tell you that. Right. Real friends. That's no right. fake friends ain't going to tell you. Mm -hmm. They got you with all these rainbow braids in your head. And they ain't say nothing to you. <laughs> They didn't say, hey, that up. Nope, hang on, hold on that. You probably should have got all them colors, maybe. Why y'all ain't saying nothing? 
Say, hey, no, that ain't, that, I don't think that look right. No, you ain't, in fact, you're not going out the house like, I'm not going to let you go out the house like that. Give me Proverbs 17 and 17. A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born uh, for adversity. Now, he says that a friend loveth how many times? All times. All times. See, God is the real friend. Mm -hmm. Because, see, he, now God, he said that even though Israel was out there messing up and he was in a relationship with him and he loved Israel. He said, now I know y'all in a bad condition, but I want y'all to come back to me. Yes, amen. That's a real friend. Not to be a real friend. Your friend make one mistake or do something wrong, you don't love him no more. You don't talk to him no more. Y'all have one altercation and you talk about you ain't saying nothing else to him for the rest of your life. That ain't no friend. That's an associate. Y'all ain't saying nothing. That's right. Real friends don't, you know, real friends go through that, the tough times. Real friends, even when, it, you know, it, it ain't, everything ain't peace and cream, real friends stick it out. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. are you a real friend? Are you a real friend? Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Uh, where, where I got you at? Proverbs. Read it again. A friend loveth at all times. And a brother is born for adversity. A friend loves at all times. Uh huh. And a brother. And a brother is born for adversity. So now, if if I'm a friend, I love at all times. So it's not just conditional. Yes. And see, a lot of you all got conditional behaviors. Well, if you didn't do this, then I'm not going to love you. Mm -hmm. If God don't bless me with this car, I'm not going to love him no more. God, if you don't do this, I'm not going to do that. Amen. That's not a real relationship. Real relationship is I'm going to love you whether you do for me or not. Amen. And see, some of y'all, this is why, this is why when we, when we look at, uh, when we look at uh, 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 marriage vows, when you get married, the vow says for rich or for poor, in sickness and in health, to death, do us part. And see, when you come in a relationship with God, get what God telling you. Amen. Said the death do us part. But the bad thing about it is if you die without a relationship, you're in trouble. <laughs> My God. If you die without a relationship with God, you're in trouble. And you'll be like them brothers now. Let's go back to that Matthew 7. Matthew 7. And uh, 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 21, uh-huh, read. Not everyone that saith unto me. Not everyone that saith unto me. Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord. Shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Uh-huh. But he that doeth the will of my father. He that doeth the will, the will. And God, his will for us is to be in him. Amen. His will for us, is to be intimate with him. His will for us is to have a relationship with him. Yes. Read, uh-huh. Our Father, which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day. Many going to say. Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord. And, and see, 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 watch this. In a relationship, it restricts you from doing all that type of other stuff. Watch this. If you're a married woman, you, ain't, you can't be talking to all these different guys. Mm -hmm. Amen. You can't you can't flirt how you used to do, how you used to flirt. You can't y'all ain't saying nothing. You can't hang out like you used to hang out because you got a man. Amen. And see, when you look up a few verses, he said, "Wide is the gate, and and, and broad is the way that leads to what destruction. destruction." So now that wide and broad gate that means that I do whatever I want to do. Right. And so when I'm in a relationship, I can't do whatever I want to do. Amen. See, yeah, let me tell you something. This new wave, this new age relationship stuff, people do whatever they want to do. Uh -huh. There ain't no real commitment. Nobody sold out. And, 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 you know, people nowadays, man, they, listen, it's rough now. <laughs> Everybody cheating. It's just the behavior. It's, the, it's the, the culture of people. Now, you used to look at it back in the day. They used to call men dogs and all stuff like that because majority of the time men were cheated. But nowadays, you got the women. I don't know what they call them, cats or something, but they, they just, 
they, they about as bad as the men was back in the day. My God, y'all ain't saying nothing. The men, the, the, the women are as bad, not, not even as bad, but probably even worse. And they say because women are smarter. They know how to cover their tracks and all that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Why y'all so confused? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Hello, y'all here? And women ain't saying nothing. Maybe. <laughs> My Lord, today. They know how to cover, cover their tracks. They say that they're a little more slicker. You know, and then they say men are dumb because they leave stuff around and all that. You know, you know the, you know the statistics. Amen. But the culture that we live in now, nobody is really committed. My God. That's why you can't get people to commit to God. My God, that's good. My God, y'all ain't saying nothing. Nobody can really commit to God. Now give me that, go up a couple of verses. What is it, 13, 7, 13? Enter ye in at the straight gate. Enter ye. So now he said, now if you're going to be in a relationship with me, you got to tighten up. So you can't, you ain't gonna be able to do whatever you want. If I ask you to pray to me in the morning, you gonna have to pray. Amen. Because that's our time together. Yes. If I'm asking you to worship me today, I need you to do that worship. Amen. And see, we have such a lawless generation now, okay. people don't like rules. My God, nobody said nothing. That's true. People don't like rules, they don't like regulations. If you say you can't do this or you shouldn't do that, oh man, they try to control me. But they tell you on that job that you can't wear this, you can't wear that. Guess what? There's no control. Okay. But can I be honest? Imagine it. Even, see, I, I came up from, a, when I was managing, you had to, your, 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 your uh, attire had to be A1. Yes. They, listen, and I, I don't have anything, people that got tattoos and all stuff like that, that's their business. But when we used to work, if you had a tattoo exposed, you had to cover it up or you couldn't work. That's you couldn't come to you couldn't come to work with blue hair. Come on. You couldn't come to work with yellow hair. Yeah. You couldn't come. Y'all ain't saying nothing. These these uh, uh, Skittles taste the rainbow hairstyle. You could not do it. When I was growing, you could not do that. When I was when I was growing up and working, we talking about 16 years ago as a manager of a restaurant. You could not do those things. That's right. Amen. But now, my God. Got Black Wendy in there. With the red hair and it's sticking up. All, just all type of stuff now. Because there's no rules. There's no regulations. And see, the, part, the, 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 the hour that we live in, nobody wants regulation. Everybody want to do whatever they want to do. You can't be in a relationship and do whatever you want to do. I'm sorry. Even with the father-son relationship, there is some things that you're going to tell your son, you cannot do that because of the relationship. You'll tell your daughter, you can't do that because of the relationship. My God, y'all ain't saying nothing. Say, hey, you, you don't know. You can't do that, baby. No, put that down. You don't need to do that because of the relationship. So when it comes down to God, it's the same concept. You want a relationship with God, he's going to tell you, you get some things that you just can't do. This is the hard part right here. There's going to be some people that you can't hang out with either. The friends you had before, when it comes down to your relationship with God, you can't hang with them no more. Because they produce a different side of you. And I didn't understand it. I was a pre young preacher. I was hanging around my friend, and he was a preacher, and I was good, good. Then I started hanging around my old friends, and I felt different. Yeah. Felt different. Yeah. I had some jeans. I felt myself walking like this. I, was, I said, hold on now. <laughs> I felt different. Why? Because of the surrounding. Listen, I don't care who you are, a certain surrounding will produce something in you. And you will become something that you used to be based upon where you at. My God, y'all ain't saying nothing. You mess around, go to Walmart, and they start playing some slow jams that you used to listen to. Something to come out of you, you'll be doing lecture slide right now. I'll tell them, oh, hey, hey, whoa, get myself together. My God, y'all ain't saying nothing. 
Why? Because atmospheres could produce. And so when it comes down to God, a relationship with God, God requires something out of us. Now watch this. When you're in a relationship with a man or a relationship with a woman and they tell you, hey, baby, I don't really like your hair like that. I like it better when it's like this. What do you do? You change it. You change it. I don't care who you are. Everybody in here, under the sound of my voice, if somebody come and you like them, they like you, you were feeling them, guess what? Whatever they said that they like, you're going to start doing it. I don't care how deep you are, how saved, sanctified you are, you're going to become conducive to whatever they're saying. I said, girl, I ain't nothing more than red hills. I like them red hills. You can be wearing red hills with everything. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, that don't even match. Why you got to? Well, you say you like them. <laughs> That's the nature of people. The nature of people is when, when we're in a relationship, we'll do whatever it takes to make that person happy. So when it comes down to God, and God say, hey, you can't have that one and have that one. You can't do this. You can't do that. Where's your love? Do you show your love by your works? You say, okay, God. I know I ain't supposed to be here, so I ain't going to do it. As bad as I want to go, because I know it's going to displease you, if it's going to put our friendship on the line, I got to step back. If it's going to put our relationship on the line, I'm going to fall back. Y'all ain't saying that. You know, when you got in that relationship with that boy, he said, hey, listen, I don't want your ex-boyfriend calling you. Y'all all right? If he say that, what you going to do? You going to wind up blocking that person. And it don't matter because some of y'all are like, well, that's my best friend. I like him. Man. And, and he's just good to me and I, I feel him and all that. You start saying all that stuff. And then, and then uh, after a while, you say, but no, no, hold on now. Hold on, hold on. If I love him enough, I'm going to make sure that I do good by him. Somebody ought to shout Hallelujah. And see, a lot of y'all, y'all, y'all play, y'all play like y'all know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> when you get in that relationship, you say, "Hey, listen, I don't want that person." And let me tell y'all something: it, it, you ain't gonna be no be best friends with your ex. Hello, y'all with me? You cannot be a best friend with your ex. It ain't possible. You know, there's a song. I don't agree. With with the singer. But this woman, I don't know what her name is, maybe Vivica Fox or somebody like that, one of them singers. She said, we can't be friends because I'm still, and I'm just going to leave it right there. But what happens is when you love somebody or if you have loved somebody, you can't get no best friend out of that. Because that, that if you move on, they're going to be whispering stuff in your ear. No, I, nah, she ain't the right one. No, he not doing. I remember when he used to do that. Why? It's impossible. Hmm. My God. That's why you can't be you can't be best friends. Amen. With that laptop when you come to God. My God, y'all ain't saying you can't be best friends with the bar when you come to God. Because you leave that door open for what you used to be. The relationship that you used to have is still open. Amen. My God, y'all ain't saying nothing tonight. God, listen, you can't, you can't have that, that Newport over there talking about my best friend. I'm going to leave right there. I ain't going to bother him. We just cool. I talk to him every now and again. After a while. After a while. Oh, God, y'all ain't saying nothing. So when you come in contact with God and he's your number one he said I don't want nobody else you can't beat all these other friends and stuff like that hold on now you gotta cut those things off if you're coming to me Amen. and that's the important thing somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. so now read that again uh -huh. enter you in the straight gate now for, for wide is the gate for wide is the gate now wide means that you can do anything mm -hmm. and when it comes down to God you can't do anything Amen. read uh huh 
And broad is the way. Broad is the way. That leads to destruction. That leads to what? Destruction. destruction. So if I want to be destroyed or, de you know, in the way of destruction, I'll do whatever I want to do. Mm -hmm. Read, uh-huh. And many there be which go in their ass. Now, see, watch this. The amazing part about it is that you'll get way more people in the broad way yes. than you'll get on the straight way. Because straight way, you're going to have more of a, a straight line, narrow line. You got to, you know, in, in line, you ain't doing whatever you want. But you know, we got all these other people doing all right, man, everybody going to travel through there. Mm -hmm. Read, uh-huh. Because straight is the gate. Because straight is the gate. And narrow is the way. And narrow is the way. Which leadeth unto life. That leads to what? To life. But now if I want light, I got to go narrow and straight. But if I want destruction, I go broad and wide. Wow. Ooh. Can I tell you something? When it's narrow and straight, you're going to get cut. Amen. Yes. Oh, my God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. When it's narrow and straight, you have to change your position. When it's narrow and straight, it ain't going to feel good. Y'all ain't saying nothing. See, 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 a lot of times, let me tell you something. When you get a message from God and it don't feel good, that's the right message you need to hear. Sometimes the message is, man, it'll beat you up. Be like, man, uh, gosh, that's the message you need to hear. That they beating you up? Oh, yeah, that's the one. Because it, it, it makes you change. So now you can't do whatever you wanted to do. Now you can't be, and watch this, you can't even be whatever you wanted to be. Wow. So now I got to be whatever God want me to be. And I, I, I'm going to have to look how he want me to look. Because I know when I go through these tight spots, mm. I'm going to lose pieces of me. Yes. Ah, God. Yes. I'm going to lose some parts of me. It's going to be some parts of me that's going to get cut off. There's going to be parts of me that's going to be removed because I'm going through that straight and narrow. I'm going through that. That, that way that just don't feel too good. Mm. And guess what? It don't feel good to your flesh. Oh. But see, if it was something spirit, it can go through the straight and narrow. Amen. If it's spirit, because it ain't hitting nothing. Mm. <laughs> God. If it's spirit, it ain't hitting anything. But when it's flesh, you're getting all these cuts, bruises, scrapes, knocks. Yeah. But when I'm going through that straight and narrow with God and that relationship with God, it's not going to feel good. Read, uh huh. And few there be that find it. And there's only be a few people, only a few people that's going to find it. Because everybody's not going to agree with it. But a few going to say, hey, listen, scrapes and bruises, that's fine with me as long as I get God. Amen. If I get a couple of cuts, if I get some nails, scrapes, guess what? Because, listen, if we're going to follow after him as dear children, we're going to have to go through the same things that he went through. Amen. Now, he got beat because he loved you. Are you willing to get beat because you love him? Are you willing to bleed because you love him? Now, that's heavy there. Are you willing to bleed? See, now, Bible says, for God so loved, he didn't so love the saints. Amen. Well. He didn't so love the righteous people. He didn't so love the people that are faithful to the church. God so loved the what? World. My God, y'all ain't saying nothing. So because God loved the world, he died. While we were sinners, Christ died. So it wasn't your good behavior, your good report card, none of that. It's because of who you were, what you were. God said, I love him. So now, would you love God enough to get your scrapes? Are you willing to get nailed to the cross? Are you willing to get pierced in your side? Are you willing to get thorns in your head? We want somebody to go through for us, but we want to go through for ourselves or for somebody else. Read, uh-huh. Beware of false prophets. Beware of false prophets. Which come to you in sheep's clothing. Uh -huh. But inwardly they are ravening wolves. Uh -huh. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Yes. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, 
Every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, uh -huh. but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Yes. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. And, and, and I'm not going to go through those because that's a part. Those few verses right there is very powerful. I'm not going to, you know, talk about it tonight or this morning. Read it, huh? Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Yes. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. Not everyone that's crying out to me or claiming me. Uh -huh. Shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Yes. But he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven. Uh -huh. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. Lord, Lord. Have we not prophesied in thy name? See, prophesying in his name doesn't necessarily mean that you're in his will. Amen. A lot of time we look for prophecies. We look to see this and look to see that, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're in the will of God. Amen. See, when it comes down to, and, and I'm not teaching on doctrine this morning, but the Bible talks about if you're in his will, you'll know his doctrine. Mm -hmm. And so me being engaged with the doctrine ain't got nothing to do with prophecy. Right. Or devils cast out because devils got to be subject to the name of Jesus either way. It don't matter if you, it don't matter who you are, what you're doing. You can be talking about Jesus name, Jesus name, somebody devil cast out, whatever like that, by the way of the name of Jesus. It's not you. But it's the name. Amen. Read, uh-huh. And in thy name have cast out devils. Uh-huh. And in thy name done many wonderful works. Yes. And then will I profess unto then them. Then I'm going to profess. I never knew you. Uh-huh. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So now we have one, one script, and I got two more verses. I'm going to let y'all go. But we have this, this text telling us that he didn't know you, meaning that there was no, no friendship. There was no relationship. Give me John 15. I'm sorry, give me, I'll go to Genesis. Go to Genesis 18. All right. Genesis 18 and 17. Uh -huh. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Now, will God consider your family on your behalf? Is your relationship with God that strong that he'll say, you know what? Let me contact Tisha because I'm about to send destruction to this side of the family. Let me, let me talk to her and make sure that, I'm, uh, that she knows that I'm about to do this. This is Abraham. Because there's a relationship with Abraham and God, he's about to destroy a whole city, but Abraham's nephew was over there. My God. The same God that told him to stay away from his nephew. My God. God, y'all must don't read your Bible. Amen. Give me, get, put, leave your finger there. Give me Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12 and 1. Uh, and the Lord has said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country. Get out of the country. And from thy kindred. And from your family. And from thy father's house. Uh-huh. Unto a land that I will show thee. Uh-huh. And I will make of thee a great nation. I will make you a great nation. And uh -huh. I will bless thee and make thy name great. Uh-huh. And thou shalt be a blessing. So now God said that he's going to make his name great, bless him, make him a great nation, and he's going to become a blessing. But the first thing he had to do was separate from his family. Amen. And Lot was a part of Abraham's family. Amen. Lot was actually Abraham's nephew. Now, we go back down to Genesis 18. God had such a friend <laughs> in Abraham that he, he questioned, should he... Destroy a city with his nephew in it. Read. Go back to 1817. Uh -huh. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Uh -huh. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great, great and mighty nation. Uh -huh. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it. Oh, now, and I'm not going to go into de detail of it, but a city can cry to God mm. based upon the nature or the condition that the people are in. My God. Just like, my God, just like in the book of Genesis, you'll see that uh, the blood of Abel was crying to God from the ground. Oh, yes. Jesus. Then the Bible says that earth can be sick. My God. 
the land. Yes. In the book of Leviticus, it talk about how the land could be sick. Yes. So now a city could be crying out to God, saying, God, there's too much foolishness going on in this city. And the city was crying out to God, and God was going to destroy the people in the city. Just like when the world got destroyed with water because of the evil heart of the men. It was a communication from God to the earth, or the earth to God, because the earth was considered God's woman. And when God, and when God has a woman, and he has this person that he has a relationship with, whatever she say, my God, he going to do it. Don't you want a relationship with God to where you can cry out and God move like that? Yes, amen. Earth was crying out to him, saying, hey, these people hearts are wicked. They're standing on me doing all of this crazy stuff. Yes, amen. So then God said, okay, baby, you want me to clean it? I'll clean it up for you. So he said, I'm going to send some water. My God. I'm going to throw water on them. Why do you think his spirit was over the water in the beginning? He, the Bible talked about how he was hovering over the earth. He was, my God, he was hanging out with his boo thing. Y'all ain't said, y'all don't understand the Bible. He, God was hanging out with the earth. He said, well, let's have a baby. God, my God, somebody shout hallelujah. So God, he spoke into the earth and got the earth pregnant with Adam. He said, oh, this is us. My God, this is, this is us. This is our thing. So this is why we get to see that the earth can cry out to God. And God responds. He responds because he said, hey, oh, earth, that's my, that's my woman. Why the earth is called mother earth. So now you have earth. And then, you know, see, when Eve came into place, she was considered mother of all living. That was she called Eve uh, because she was trying to mirror. Adam and Eve was mirroring the relationship of God and the earth. My God. Lord, I wish I could talk about that, but I ain't got time. All right. All right. Read. Uh huh. Which is come unto me. Just come unto me. And if not, I will know. Uh huh. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. For Abraham stood yet before the Lord. Now. They're going to Sodom and Gomorrah to destroy it. But Abraham stood before God. Yes. Read. Uh -huh. And Abraham drew near and said. Got close to him. Yes. My God. <laughs> Abraham understood yes. being a friend of God. Sometimes if I get close enough, yes. he could feel me. My God. That's good. My God. See, you know how, and, and maybe some of y'all don't know because your head always down in your phone, but. When you're having a conversation with somebody and you look them into their eyes, look in their eyes, you can feel them. Amen. But y'all text too much. Y'all don't, don't, don't know how to go out <laughs> and sit down, put the phones down and just talk. But when I can look at somebody and talk to them, they can feel me. Yes. So Abraham said, let, let me get close to God. Let me, let me draw nigh unto him. Read, uh-huh. Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Now, Abraham talking to God, like, you, you mean to tell me you're going to destroy the wicked folk and the righteous together? Yes. Read, uh-huh. Her adventure there be 50 righteous within the city. Uh-huh. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein? Uh-huh. That be far from thee to do after this manner, uh -huh. to slay the righteous with the wicked. He said, now, God, what kind of manners you got? My God. That's just Abraham talking to God. Now, some of y'all can't talk to God like that because y'all ain't got no relationship. Yeah, that's right. But Abraham has such a friendship with God. He said, now, what, God, what kind of manners you got? You mean to tell me you're going to kill off everybody all together, the wicked people and the righteous folk? What kind of manners you got, God? Read on. Uh -huh. And that the righteous should be as the wicked uh -huh. that be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Oh! He said, God, you're the judge of all earth. You're not going to do right? My God. God. So you mean to tell me that God having a conversation with Abraham and Abraham trying God? Hold like, on, oh, God, what you, what you got going on today? Right. My God. So you being God and you can judge everything, you telling me that you ain't going to do right? Challenging God. My God. Because he had a relationship. See, some of y'all scared to do it because you don't have a relationship. You don't know how to talk to God. <laughs> oh my God. Let me hurry up and get y'all out of here. Read, huh? And the Lord said, the Lord if, said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within so the city. Abraham, because of the relationship with God, he changed the mind of God. Yes. 
God was going to destroy the city, but then he changed his mind and said, okay, well, if I can find 50, I'll go ahead. But he couldn't find 50. <laughs> then I will spare all the places for their sake. Uh -huh. And Abraham answered and said, behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Uh -huh. Peradventure there shall lack five of the 50 righteous. Wilt thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, if I find there 40 and five, I will not destroy so it. So now the conversation goes back and forth, and I'm closing. <laughs> they go back and forth because there was a relationship of God. So he was talking to God and saying, hold on now, God, you're going to do it like that? Don't be like that. Because they had a relationship. And see, he wasn't talking in the sky. My God. <laughs> see, God came in a body. And this is an indication that the reason why God came in the body, so he could relate. So now for us to relate, we got to get out of the body. My God. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. In order for me to relate to him, I got to get out of the body because for him to relate to me, he had to get in the body. So now he understands me. Now I have to understand him. In order to understand him, I got to come out of myself. Can't be selfish. Can't be about me. Can't be about my will. Can't be about what I think. When you get in a relationship with God, all of that you, you, my, me, me, all that stuff like that, that thing going to trash. I mean, Lord, whatever your will be, whatever you want me to do. Because in this relationship, you leading the way. I'm not leading. You made me. And see, the older as we grow and the older that we get, sometimes it's hard. That's why you want to, when you start training, that's why the Bible talks about train, train up a child the way they should go. So when they get older, they won't depart because the older a person gets, the harder it is to make them. And you'll see, because Isaiah talks about us being clay. And one thing about clay is real soft when you first open that thing up. After a while, you let that thing sit for some years and years and years and years, it becomes hard. So now it's not moldable. It, 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 it's, it's not moldable anymore. Amen. That's why it's good to catch people in their youth because now yes. they understand. That's why it's good to keep these little babies and stuff, keep them in church. Keep them growing up in, in the Lord. Amen. Keep them up in God. Teach them how to pray. All of, this is why the Bible talks about in the book of Jeremiah. Teach your daughters. Yes. Teach them. Teach the daughters. Because yes. when they get older, the influence of the world but if they got something to stand for, one thing I admire about this young lady here, um, Deborah, come from a whole different city. She's in college. She sent a message. And I know she don't mind me sharing this. She sent a message to our page and said, hey, I want to go to a church that has strong doctrine. My God. I'm coming to college and I want to go to a church that got sound doctrine. Yes. Young lady. People get away from home and go to school, man, please. Oh, wow. Doctrine. <laughs> it's party time, boy. My, my mom and dad ain't around here. I need, hey. That's true. Doctrine, man. Let me go to one of these little churches around here that don't care nothing about no preaching no truth. That's right. She said somebody told her about the truth, told her about us. Thank you, Lord. Came all the way to, and then bring her parents. Yes. And they gave me the stamp of approval. Thank you, Lord. Said, oh, I, I, yeah, he's good. I, I can let my daughter go there. But we're talking about a young lady right. coming from a whole different town. Say, I want to go somewhere that's teaching truth. I got doctrine. There's something that ain't going to let me go to straight. That's a right. message like this to where I ain't doing whatever I want to do. Right. You know why? Because as a child, her father, Brother Ruiz, voted up. Right. <laughs> and so now, how do you? 20, 20 years old. 20 years old in college. And said, I want, I need to make sure I'm in a church that's going to teach some truth. You know why? Because that molding. Get that molding ground. She can't depart from it. She heard about some of the stuff that we don't believe in. She said, she got excited. She said, oh, y'all believe in that? Oh, we don't either. Got happy. 
You get the truth. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, let us stand. Lord, help us tonight. Y'all come up. Grab somebody's hand. We're going to pray, God, make our relationships better with you. We don't want just a mediocre relationship. Come on, this way. Yeah, come this way. We don't want just a mediocre relationship. We don't want just an ordinary relationship. God, we want something genuine. God, we want something that's going to last forever. Till death do us part. Lord, we don't want just a relationship that's like everybody else's. God, we want something intimate. God, we want a relationship that could hold us, mold us, make us. Lord, don't give up on us. Lord, we don't want you to let us go. Lord, we are being apologetic tonight or this afternoon. Apologizing to you, God. For not allowing or for us not being in your will and wanting the relationship that you want from us, the relationship that you desire with us. Lord God, we apologize tonight. Forgive us. Forgive us for our arrogance. Forgive us for our pride. Forgive us for thinking that we know how the relationship should go. Lord Jesus, we want to be ministered to God so we can minister to you, build upon us as we build on each other, showing your love. God, we want to love you for real. We don't want to just love how we were trained in our dysfunctional houses growing up, God, but we want to love you for real. Teach us how to love. Teach us how to relate. Teach us how to grow. Teach us how to love on one another so we can properly love on you. Teach us how to love ourselves so that we can know how to love. In the name of Jesus. Lord, you are our world. Lord, we need a touch from you. Lord, as we continue on, God, challenge our minds to make sure that the relationship is what you want out of us. Lord, we know that this journey isn't easy. We know this journey isn't what our flesh desires. But Lord, help us to God be conducive our wills to be conducive to what you want out of us in the name of Jesus Lord we want to be your friend Lord I thank you Lord we praise you in Jesus name on the way back to your seat, hug a few people and encourage them to get a real relationship and a friendship with God.
Jesus.